The Noctua NH-P1 has first been seen on a trade show a few years ago. Of course, back then it was just a prototype and nobody believed much about it. Well, today we have it here and it is a genuine product that is available for purchase right now. And for how much? The Noctua NH-P1 is available for around 110 US dollars or the equivalent in euros. And for that you get plenty, and I mean plenty. This is a big cooler, but you'll get to see that later into the review. The design of this CPU cooler is made to work. This is clearly not a heatsink that has been repurposed to work without direct airflow. This is a CPU cooler that was designed from the ground up to passively cool the CPU, which makes sense given that Noctua needed a lot of time to release it. The Noctua NHP1 has a height of 158mm, a width of 154mm and a length of 152mm, with a total weight of 1000 180 grams and that weight it's justifiable because this cooler is made from solid aluminum and nickel plated copper and the build quality is well on par with the best that Noctua has to offer. The edges are very smooth and all surfaces are made well with no imperfections or manufacturing marks. The heatsink uses 13 aluminum made cooling fins to dissipate the heat. Each of these fins has a thickness of around 2.5 millimeters and they are spaced in such a way to allow for the air to easily pass through the cooler. Speaking of which, the space between the cooling fins is around 8mm, which is plenty to get good air circulation and maintain a solid structure for the heatsink at the same time. The NHP1 uses 6 copper made heat pipes, and each is shaped to make contact with all cooling fins and also to increase the overall clearance for the RAM modules and the heatsinks of the motherboard. More on the clearance later on. These heat pipes are made from copper and are also covered by a good layer of nickel plating. This will not only increase the reliability of the surface, but it adds more depth to the design of the cooler. The endings of the heat pipes are machined symmetrically and they do not need to be covered. They look very good and match with the rest of the cooler, a thing which a lot of manufacturers are still struggling to do. The base plate is made from solid nickel plated copper and has a smooth surface with just a subtle sunburst pattern left from the manufacturing process. This base plate is close in design with the base plate used on the Noctua NHD15 or, why not, the NHD14. The six heat pipes make direct contact with the back side of the base plate of the CPU cooler. The two surfaces, the base plate and the heat pipes, are soldered together to offer the best possible heat transfer. The accessories included with the Noctua NHP1 are what you can expect from a Noctua CPU cooler. One thing to note here though is that this cooler has a different and brand new Noctua branded screwdriver, which is quite nice. It's long and does its job. Not only that, but the tip of this screwdriver is a regular torque speed. Anyway, we have a user manual, a metallic made backplate, intel mounting arms, AMD mounting arms, metal nuts, plastic spacers, double threaded screws, a case badge, a tube of Noctua NTH2 thermal compound, a pair of fan mounting clips and a Noctua NACW1 cleaning wipe. The installation process is very easy, as is the case with most if not all Noctua CPU coolers, and that's thanks to the Noctua SecuFirm 2 mounting system which is the best on the market right now. First of all, you take the backplate which has the studs pre-installed from the factory. Then you place the backplate on the back of the CPU socket. Afterwards, you insert the plastic spacers over the studs and then place the mounting arms over the studs and spacers. You then secure them with these metallic nuts and then you apply the thermal compound onto the CPU surface and install the cooler onto the mounting arms. And that's it. You are done. And this is how the Noctua NH-P1 looks like installed in my testing system. The orientation of the cooler should be based on the airflow direction of your system, so I do not want to hear arguments about how I installed the CPU cooler wrong. In this system, the airflow comes mostly from the front fans and exits the case from the back and top fans, which justifies the position of the cooler. The clearance of the Noctua NH-P1 is very good, even though the cooler is installed like this. Sure, the heatsink does cover 2.5 of the 4 RAM modules available, but it still leaves plenty of space for the RAM kit. The expansion slot clearance is very good, with ample space between the cooler and the graphics card. Before we test the CPU cooler, it's time to hear how this cooler sounds while in use, and for this you will get to hear a noise sample of the cooler running inside the testing system. I am doing this because while a decibel value is useful to compare the CPU coolers together, it does not take into account external sound sources such as bearing ticking on the fans or vibrations on the heatsink.
With no fans installed on the heatsink, the Noctua NHP1 reached a maximum light output of 0. However, if you install the optional Noctua NF-A12X 25LSPWM fan, then the noise output is increased to absolutely nothing. This fan is spinning at a maximum speed of 1200 RPM, and thanks to the way the cooling fins are spaced, the airflow of the fan has no resistance whatsoever, thus there is little to no noise present. And I mean it, the microphone would not pick up the noise made from the fan, not unless the microphone was 1 cm away from the fan, and such a small distance makes absolutely no sense in a review. The cooler is tested using the Intel i9-9900K CPU, which is more than this cooler is supposed to handle. Actually, according to Noctua, the 9900K will work, but no overclocking and the turbo boost frequency might not happen at all. Anyway, the cooler is tested in a closed-off system as per usual, and the ambient temperature is set at 26 degrees Celsius. The first test uses the Intel Burntest V2 benchmark, a synthetic benchmark which places a load onto the CPU, which is similar in severity with what you can get when playing a modern AAA video game. And in this test, the Noctua NHP1 reached a maximum temperature of 78 degrees Celsius, and this is just a CPU cooler without any fans installed on a heatsink. Quite a good result for a fully passive CPU cooler. However, this temperature is with the 9900K CPU running at its factory setting. Overclocking is not possible. Trust me, I've tried. However, if you add in the optional fan, the Noctua NF-A12X25 LS PWM, then the temperature is lower by 6 degrees to reach 72 degrees Celsius. And the fan in my case was installed on the side of the cooler, pushing the air through the heatsink and following the route of the airflow inside the system. And what about the second test that would push every CPU cooler to its limit? Well, it's not happening. The Noctua NHP1 is not capable of such a high CPU load, and the CPU temperature did jump straight into the thermal throttling. So we are going to skip the test altogether as it makes no sense to test a CPU cooler that is not designed for high TDP usage, but that pretty much failed in this test. The Noctua NHP1 is an interesting CPU cooler. It performs better than I expected to be completely honest, as a 9900K CPU is not an easy thing to cool, not even for coolers that have one or even two fans installed. The NHP1 is a cooler that is made for one simple thing, cooling with no sound output. Not only that, but this cooler will work forever, as there are no failure points present. The price of 110 US dollars or euros is justified and comparing the NHP1 to other similarly priced CPU coolers is not fair. It would be convenient to say that CPU coolers priced under 70 US dollars are better at cooling but the NHP1 is not made for cooling the best. It is made, as I've said before, to cool in a fully passive system, or at least to cool as a fully passive CPU cooler. You will have to decide for yourself if the NHP1 is the right cooler for you. I can safely say that this is a good CPU cooler, and it made some innovations, even though it is made for a single purpose and nothing else. And credit where credit is due, it did work just fine with a 9900K CPU that was running at its boost frequency. Well, sort of close enough to boost frequency, but a 9900K nonetheless. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more. And also, if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below, you can find the links for both the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages of this channel.